Hi kindergartners, it's Mrs. Navi back for another virtual science lab. I want to start out today by letting you know that I have some eggs, some chicken eggs, in an incubator. I didn't tell you about that on my last video, but it's very exciting. So this is day 18 for these eggs in the incubator. Now the incubator acts like the mother hen. Since we don't have a mother hen, we set the temperature at 99.5, which would be just like the hen's body, and we leave them in there for 21 days. Now this is day 18. So we're gonna check on the eggs and see how they're developing. I'm going to take one egg out and we're going to go do what is called candling. Now that's a process of shining a very bright light into the egg to see if something's developing on the inside. So follow me to a dark room where I have the candler all set up. And we're going to see if the chicken is developing inside the egg. So you'll notice that there's just a spot at the bottom where it looks like it's just air and no chicken. The chicken now is taking up almost all of the egg. So this one is developing just fine. I took a field trip to the Tingle family farm. Now you may know that name, Garrett Tingle, who unfortunately is not here today, is in Miss Rogers' class. And he lives on this beautiful property with chickens and ducks and some other animals. Miss Tingle is here to tell us a little bit about the chicken coop. And this chicken might be one of the ones that laid the eggs that we have in the incubator. So Garrett's dad built this coop. And so they can come out in the free range or they can be inside. Our water is in this bucket here and then the feeding tubes are along the back wall. At night they go inside the chicken coop about dark and then they roost in there all night. And then in the morning the door opens and they come out and you know, do whatever they like to do. And then around back is where the nesting boxes are where they lay all the eggs. Let's take a look around back. I believe there are some eggs in the nesting box that this hen was just sitting on. who's the engineer of this fabulous chicken coop and he's going to tell you about the timer for the chickens. Hey guys, so at night when the uh, the chickens are ready to go to sleep they'll uh, they'll come in here just instinctively. They'll come in and walk up this ramp right here and then uh, walk into their home up into the roosts inside and then at night there's a sensor on here that automatically sees that it's getting dark and then it will close the gate automatically. And that way at night they can rest and not worry about coyotes or raccoons or any kind of uh, predators coming in and grabbing them while they're sleeping. And they can, uh, if they're, when daylight comes, they will uh, wait for the door to open and it will automatically open when it senses daylight. So these are our ruined ducks. They're all females. That's why they're brown. So you can see their webbed feet. That's how they swim in the water. But they also have claws so that they can scrape around in the land and try to get any bugs to come up because they like to eat the bugs. But they're about a year old, about a week ago, and they're really sweet. And I don't know if you can see, but on their wings, they have a bright blue sapphire stripe. That's really pretty. Do they fly? They fly a little bit, um, you know, just enough to get away from anything. But that's why we picked this kind, so that um, <clears throat> they wouldn't fly away and they'd stay here with us. They're uh, actually bred to not fly. They, uh, they come from the mallard family of ducks. So the, the boy ducks look kind of like mallard ducks. They have the bright green heads and um, they uh, are really bred just to be uh, pet ducks 
and uh, be around the farm. So this is where the ducks live, and this is where their food is. They eat crumbles of food, kind of like the chickens do. But with ducks, they cannot eat food without water. So they'll get a mouthful of food from here, and then they'll go over to the pond, and they'll get a mouthful of water, and that is how they eat their food. And then they swim in the water, um, they can eat plants out of the water, and then they can also forage on the ground for bugs and you know other grass like seeds and stuff. While Mr. and Mrs. Tingle are out trying to catch an adult chicken, we thought we would stop by the brooder. Now, brooder is a place where, we, where young chickens are kept to keep them warm until they can be out in the night air and the day air. They have 17 babies that are about five or six days old. We want to look at them and see if they look like their parent or not. We're going to look at one up close, but before we do that, you can see their food is right here their water, this is their shelter, and they have heat lamps to help keep them warm. Baby chicks need to be at 95 degrees the first week of life, and then 90, and then 85, and then after about three weeks, they can be outside. Now, Abigail has caught one of the baby chicks. She's gonna show us its beak, and when they first hatch, they have something called an egg tooth. And it looks like that, that one has an egg tooth that may have already fallen off. That helps them pip out of the egg. Abigail, you wanna show us the wing? So this baby already has some feathers developing on the wings. When they first hatch, they just have fluff. That's how they look different from the adult chicken. But now this one is starting to develop feathers on its wing and maybe a little bit on its tail. Now let's compare a chicken to a duck. We do have the baby chicken, but their feet are similar to when they become adults. Duck feet had web, a lot of webbing because they swim. Abigail, do you think chickens swim? They do not. They do not. They don't like the water. They don't like to swim, so they don't need the webbed feet. But they do have little claws, and their beak is a much different shape than a duck. But they're alike in several ways, too. They're both fluffy when they're born, and then they develop feathers. They have wings, two wings, two feet, beaks, two eyes, and they're birds. So we're taking a look at the chickens. We've got an adult chicken and a baby chicken about five days old. What are some of the similarities and differences? Does the baby look like its mother? <laughs> For the most part, they both have wings, they both have two feet, but they do go through some changes when they become adults. You'll see that the adult has a comb and a waddle, all those red parts on its face, and has real feathers. When the babies are hatched, they have more like downy, almost like fur covering their bodies to keep them warm. I wanna say thank you so much to the Tingles for inviting us to their family farm. Thank you, Tingles. It's been fun, thanks for coming. It's so nice of the Tingles to invite us to their family farm and teach us all about their birds and the habitat that they live in. So thank you, Tingle family. Next, we've been talking a lot about birds. I've asked Whitney, who's a fourth grader at Addison, to tell us more about reptiles, especially our bearded dragon, because her family has been taking care of Lizzie. Hi kindergartners, I'm Whitney from fourth grade and I heard you guys were learning about animals this week in science time. This is Lizzie and as you know cats and dogs have four legs and a tail like she has. Four legs and a tail. But instead of fur or hair like cats and dogs do, she has scales. So she's a reptile. Reptiles are cold blooded so she has to be warm. She is tan because so she can blend in with the desert. And she has long claws so she can climb on logs and trees and stuff, or me. Bye, bye kindergartners. Well, thank you, Whitney. If we were to compare Lizzie to my dog, Henry, there's actually a lot of similarities. They both have four legs, they have a tail, they have a similar coloring to them, ears, eyes, but Henry is not a reptile. He's definitely a mammal. He has a fur coat. He drank his mother's milk like mammals do. And he did not come from an egg like most reptiles. Thank you, Henry. All right, 
kindergartners, this has been a lot of fun. Next time I'll be back talking more about how plants and animals interact and work together. Bye kindergartners, I miss you.